good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my talk is my new year and this potential of capital investment program in South Africa. And this is the outline of my talk. I'll take you through the background, list some research questions, um, what we did, how we did it, discuss the results, conclude on the results, and then share it on the ongoing one. Crotonaria caterpillar is a bushy woody herb or shrub. It can grow from 1 meters to 10 meters. Um, the leaves are trifoli. It is mini flower. Flowers are lemon yellow color to a greenish yellow color. This plant is indigenous to the tropical East Africa, occurring in Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, some parts of the DRC, Kenya, and Ethiopia. In South Africa, it was originally imported as an ornamental in um, According to the Sequoia database and the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, um, Crotillaria latiflora has been recorded in seven of the nine provinces in South Africa. Now this plant um, can invade natural habitat. It invades, it invades watercourses, roadsides, grasslands, savanna biomes, and forest mansions. Um, now because of this, um, this plant was proposed to be a category 1A invader according to the National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act, which just means that trading in this plant is prohibited and compulsory control is required. What we aim to do with this project, we want to model the current distribution of the species in South Africa so as to be able to tell how far and how fast it's spreading. We want to study the sizes and growth characteristics of existing populations uh, so as to know its mode of spread and uh, pollinators, etc. And how significant uh, the soil seed bank is so as to find out how persistent the plant is. We want to know if this species poses a significant threat to South Africa in terms of its impact on biodiversity and ecosystems. Uh, we want to model the future distribution so as to be able to tell where it's likely to invade. And we want to be able to um, tell uh, what, what will it cost management to control this plan and ultimately come up with a, a good management plan. Now we went to the field to the field safe form or checklist that looks like this where we took great references with the altitude distances from road, size of population, population structure, we divided it into several groups and observed for pollinators and flower visitors. Uh, we did a soil seed bank study and a soil mineral analysis. Uh, with the soil uh, seed bank study, when we sampled, we ran a tape measure across the population. We wanted to get an idea of the spread of the seeds outside of the population. So we ran a tape measure across the population um, two meters outside of the population on the east, two meters or outside of the population. On the west, we just chose east and west just to standardize things across the populations that we were measuring. And we collected soil samples every two meters on the tape measure at an area of 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter. And we dug um, a depth of about 10 centimeters. We quantified the seeds by sieving the soil with an 8 millimeter core sieve and a 4 millimeter core sieve, and then we counted the seeds. Uh, for the seed viability, I prepared a represented transient solution according to the Peters um, method, and so as to see if the seeds would stay indicating that they are viable or not stay indicating that they are not viable. We scarify the seeds, making it clean, wipe them overnight, and then expose them to the tetrazolum solution so as to see if they are viable. For the seed germination, we scarify the seeds, wipe them again overnight, um, uh, incubated them in moist waters and at uh, about 25 degrees Celsius temperature, and then uh, observe the germination. We did some working on mix them, and I acquired some tuba. So what I mean, data from World Team, and World Team uses 19 biotechnologies of variables, and additionally to this, I also included altitude to see if it's a good measure. And I used uh, current climatic conditions for this model. 
across the five populations that we have, three in Gauteng province, one in Kumalanga, and one in Kwasubu Natal, uh, uh, the Kobein and the local populations, uh, Kobein in Pretoria, <coughs> Lofa, and Kumalanga seems to be one of the biggest populations um, between these five. And, but Kotelaida and Tiflora is relatively small populations, ranging some from two plants to, to about 14 plants. Population structure for, for the number of individuals that we can get, uh, we divide them into seedlings, into three productive young plants, a young flowering plant, a mature multi stem plant, old multi stem plants, plants that survive fire. And there was, there was variation, but there was also evidence of, um, of pre recruitment. And also, when, when, when after fire, we see seedlings and then uh, free sprouts again. We also looked at uh, population height, population ranges from 2 um, to, to 4 meters, so there's also variation in there. And now, this slide shows the results, the results of the soil seed bank. Uh, for four populations with the number of seeds uh, plotted against position on the tape measure with zero being the middle of the population. And uh, one can observe that um, there's, a, there's a bit of a trend where in the middle of the population uh, there are more seeds and as you go out of the population the lesser seeds you get and ultimately no seeds um, as you go out of the population. Uh, this also suggesting that there's a there's a there's a, this suggesting that there's a there's a, a, a no no strong seed dispersed. And I just uh, wanted to show this map we saw uh, patterns in, in South Africa with uh, the Cotoleria agatiflora populations planted on it uh, because of the soil mineral composition study that we did to say that soil seems not to be a limiting factor for, for these populations or for the spread of this plant species. We've got 100% seed viability for all populations. Um, we have seeds looking like this initially and all of them stay and all of them staying with uh, dark red. 100% germination also, but I also need to indicate that with no scarification, the 0% uh, germination is showing some strong seed pollen. We also packed some flowers and uh, just to exclude some pollinators, and so we we observed that there was no seed set in in, in the bed flowers. And several pet species were photographed uh, pollinating the plants. Uh, honeybees were observed, uh, observed as visitors on the plant. Now, these are some of the earliest records of Cotonaria gatiflora in the country. Uh, since its earliest uh, record, Cotonaria, it has been almost around 100 years now, or 90 years, and it seems to be a, a slow invader. However, more than 30 records have now been uh, recorded uh, across Houghton. Uh, an update will also be um, expected. For the for the modeling, uh, we used uh, 165 records as acquired from the Global Biodiversity Information Facility to do the model and with the current climatic conditions, and this is how the model looks like, with the blue parts showing uh, non-potential uh, non suitability of this plant to invade, and with the greenish to yellow parts showing parts that are potentially suitable uh, for Cotonaria and Flora um, to, to invade. With uh, some parts of South Africa, the topmost parts are northwest, and the eastern parts of South Africa showing a potential suitability for invasion. <coughs> now with that, I'd like to conclude by saying that currently this species has been recorded in seven provinces and the numbers are increasing greatly, especially in and and that the sizes of populations agree with the number of seeds collected from the soil system. 
and that there is no lateral spread of seeds outside of the canopy, and there's um, this evidence that there's no strong seed dispersal, and that there are relatively small seed uh, bank, especially for uh, smaller populations, and that it seems to be a slow but persistent invader, and then that its seed coat dormancy and ability to, to respond makes it very um, persistent. And that climate modeling shows that Cotalaga Catacora can potentially invade some parts of South Africa. And now with that being said, um, the listing of Cotalaga Agatiflora is as a category 1 invader is supported by this study. So control or immediate control of this plant is required. I would like to also continue with isozyme studies just to determine if this plant is from a single or multiple introductions. Uh, with the information gathered uh, due to Australian uh, wheat risk assessment model, and to make several trials and possibly develop a, a management plan. And with that being said, uh, it was posed as a question for me, and now I'd like to put it out on the floor, maybe to be discussed later that as this species is uh, uh, still an EDRR project or should it be maybe handed down to uh, the biocontrol agent people. And now with that being said, I'd like to thank you. I just wanted to ask your populations, are they on level areas or on steep banks? And the reason I ask is because there's another population in Howick that you haven't um, examined and it's on a very steep bank leading to the, in, in, into the Ngani River and it's, it's spread all the way down. So I'm wondering if it, if it happens to land on a bank, it's going to go down and get into the river and go further because it's, it goes right over the road over and down the bank. Uh, we in 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 Nesbrit, in the local botanical gardens we have the population growing on a it's 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 a flat slope though but in between two canals or two water courses and then yes it does but yes you do find it uh, growing on 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 on, on steep slope but with the with the populations that I've worked on they 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 all of them are on so I'm just wondering if on the slope you could have gravity distribution, which you're not finding on a flat level, you say it's very few seeds outside of the population. <coughs> there was another question this side. Okay, thank you. A very interesting study. My question is based on your analysis of seed germination. So I just want to find out to you regarding the seed collection where you were collecting at a depth of around 10 centimeters, where maybe in terms of the seeds that you collected, did you look at maybe analyzing the seeds that you collected at different uh, depth? Maybe some of the seeds, as an example, maybe you find maybe around maybe two or five centimeters, and then after set five centimeters, maybe to around eight centimeters, you find some seeds. So because I still assume that maybe the different, in terms of seed germination levels, on the different levels in terms of where the seeds are lying on the soil, maybe will also differ in terms of germinating, uh, germination uh, uh, capacity, if I can say like that. Um, and also, I still see maybe as the study continues, maybe it will also start looking at the, let's say you approach a population or a stand of that vegetation today, maybe try before you collect the seeds, to maybe start to maybe look at evaluating, maybe when could be the seeds have been maybe lying on the ground, since maybe you reached that population for the first time, but 
we try to maybe try to assume maybe the seeds were there maybe five years, I mean a year or six months back. Yeah. So that for continuation of the study. Thank you for that. Uh, but thank you for the comment. And then the first question is that, with, I mean, to answer your first question, the seeds were on the floor, on the topmost. So if you go down, I'd say maybe two centimeters. But further down, you wouldn't find any seeds for all the populations. Okay, I'll take one more, one more question, and I think then we need to go on here. Could, could I ask, um, I think an excellent study, really interesting, very interesting indeed, that you asked, is this now an EDNRR project, or should it be handed on to someone else? Uh, it seems to me a, a no-brainer, it's, it's no more an EDNR project. Somebody else should take it over. What are the arguments for keeping it as an early detection rapid response program or ISP program, meaning that there is still potential for eradication. It seems to me there's no potential for eradication. So <coughs> EDNR should hand it on. Uh, obviously you guys have discussed this umpteen times, but I think it would be interesting for the audience just to get some insights as to the arguments that are going on. Yes, that, that, that would be nice if during the discussion we can talk a bit about that. 